Oh, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. As the lockdown continues in cities and towns across America, rodents, specifically rats, are taking to the streets like never before. If you live in New York, you definitely spotted a Norwegian brown rat. They're on the streets, they're in the subways, <laughs> they're in your house. But this rat epidemic is really linked to one thing, and it's that New York has a trash problem. So to really understand them, I decided to dive deep into the rat world, and I interviewed a rat expert and went rat hunting with some dog owners. But New York has been a dirty city since it was built in the 1600s, and rats have been a New York staple for over 250 years. Most people think of rats as these disgusting, scary, disease-carrying creatures. I mean, they are responsible for killing over 200 million people, but the only reason that they're here is because of how we consume and dispose of our waste. And unfortunately, because of COVID-19, the New York City Department of Sanitation budget was slashed by $106 million, meaning that garbage collection is not as frequent, which means there's more trash on the streets, and evidently there's more rats. So as I was trying to understand how to make New York City cleaner, I started finding hundreds and thousands of these brown little things. And it turns out that there's anywhere between two to 32 million rats in New York City. That's four times as many rats as there are humans in the city. So to really understand what their dangers are, I've reached out to one of only eight rat experts in the world, Michael Parsons, a professor and researcher at Fordham University. So I'm about to speak to Michael, who is a rat expert. Literally no one else knows about rats more than he does. Very interested and curious to see what he has to say. Hey. How are you, Sam? Good, good. Well, we're gonna have fun talking about rats. <laughs> I'm excited. It's been a really busy time for rats given the pandemic. For every rat you see, there may be a dozen, there may be a hundred that you're not seeing. And when people are seeing rats during the daytime, these are nocturnal animals, then I understand rats are really out of control. They're literally looking to stay like our shadows or our ghosts, just out of sight. We know they're there, but they don't want to be in our direct line of sight. Backing off that, what are, what are some of the dangers that rats can potentially have to us humans? Um, one, they foul our food stores. Um, from Southeast Asia, you hear about them, massive amounts of rice that's being destroyed because of rats. They do um, also start fires and they even disable vehicles. Another thing rats have been associated with, believe it or not, depression, mental illness. Just the mere sight of rats is enough to cause a heavy association with depression. But most concerning, I guess, and that is um, transferring pathogens. Historically, rats have been associated with more deaths than all wars combined. Rats have been described as disease sponges. They literally go in amongst our wastes, soak up the pathogens. They have a really cool way of navigating up the pipes from sewers into a high-rise apartment to make it all the way up to, say, a 34 apartment. Wow. They come out in your toilet. And unfortunately, they're bringing with them what they've been soaking up. And so rats that move through the sewers could very easily move through COVID without being infected, but it could be um, carried up in their fur or their feet. You know, the more difficult they are to study, I suppose, the, the harder we should be trying to study them because people will always create garbage and wastes until we learn to uh, manage our hygiene a little better, urban hygiene. You know, rats, are, they could be the death of us all, I guess you would say. I mean, I guess what can be done and what should be done to, um, you know, to try to prevent these diseases that the humans. True rodentology, uh, urban rodentology is in its infancy. And so we're just sort of lacking the grassroots. The researchers have to have access. We have to have the key to the city. Let's put urban hygiene at the forefront. I'm truly mind blown by the impacts that rats can have on our health, our economy, and cities around the world. The potential that they have in harming our society is definitely scary. They're also a lot smarter than we think, and Michael's work is very admirable. And I only hope that New York City gives him the help that he deserves. As Michael studies rat population and the changes in their behavior, I met with a very different group of New Yorkers who tackled this rat epidemic. The Riders Alley Trencher Fed Society 
is a group of dog owners who take to the streets every Friday night to hunt rats down. Although their contribution in reducing the city's rat population is minimal, it's apparently a good workout for the dogs. What's up, guys? What's going on, bro? How's it going? I'm Jimmy, Sam. Man. Nice to meet oh, you. Man. you too. We actually don't have to go anywhere. I mean, just come to the same place all the time and the rats are there. I mean, what's the, the reason that you, you guys hunt? A, it's fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Fun for us, fun for the dogs. And it lets the dogs do what they are genetically hardwired to do. And that's to hunt vermin. Terriers. And do you think rats are a problem to New York City? Probably a close second to the politicians. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you scout out rats? So usually the garbage is out away from their their uh, holes, you know, their habitat. So you catch them when they're away from their holes, yeah. and then the dogs can smell the rats through the, you know, they could smell them through the garbage, whatever. Yeah. You know, so yeah. They kill the, they kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ver, motherfucking nail five. Five. We got tons of them shit. Where do you see, where do you usually see them? Try this fence. <laughs> over here, they're all over. They're all over? They're all over. <laughs> over here? My bills are 80. Yeah? They be like 50 to 100 of them. You're doing good tonight. Is that a successful night? That's a good night. And so this is like a, a fun way for you and the dog. To have a good night. To have a good night, kill some rats. Good, good Friday nights. Good Friday nights, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, this is our Friday night. And what time is it right now? Right now, five after one in the morning. So I will go bring him home. He will get a bath because no way he's climbing in the bed with me tonight like this. And do you think that, you know, killing 26 rats today um, made a difference? Made a difference? It probably did, but we'll never notice it. I never thought that I would know this much about rats, but what is super clear to me is that trash and rats go hand in hand and that there's a lot of trash right now here in New York City. As Michael talked about, urban planning is key to fighting this rat epidemic. And New York City is taking a few different steps in fighting rats. They've implemented simple but effective rat-proof bins all over the city, and they're also doing more complex things like borough harassment. But at the end of the day, rats aren't going away anytime soon. But you as an individual can greatly help this rat epidemic. And it's just as simple as by just being a little more clean. By that, if it's not obvious enough, you can help by trying to limit the amount of waste you use and disposing of it in a more responsible manner. For example, you can take out your trash to the curb closer to the pickup time, or you can keep your food at home in closed containers. But more importantly, you could help by generating less waste and just maybe New York City will be a cleaner city and a rat-free city.